Hello and welcome everyone, this is Kalebovich coming to you with another episode of Deck Check. Well, Whispers of the Throne, the newest mini expansion to Eternal Card Game, has been with us for some time now, and in the, from the beginning people will were head over heels for cards such as uh, Kilo, such as Vox, but the other three uh, tri-faction legendaries had not been too tinkered with, or well, maybe some Kaspar here and there. But there is a card, there is a very famous witch, Raska Rewarded, the menace 2 cost 3-3 uh, three, three cultist, that has not been played too much, at least to, to my knowledge. It is a card with a quite unique ability when it comes to eternal card game, because it comes back from your void to your hand each time you play a dragon that you had not played uh, this game yet, I'm counting the names of dragons. And, well, that ability is quite unique to Eternal, but I believe uh, the origins of it could be traced to Magic the Gathering, to a card I held uh, very dear to my heart called Squee Goblin Nabob. And you might know this, or you might not know this card from uh, Mercadian Masks, Arcadian Masks, for way, way, way back in the day. Back in my day! Uh, so, the Squee was coming back from your discard pile, sorry, from your graveyard to your hand, each and every upkeep, so each and every turn. So, you don't have to build a huge setup of playing dragons, etc., etc. Uh, but uh, this, uh, this card here was played mainly for the returning ability, not for the stats. I mean, 3 costs 1-1. One, one. If you know anything about magic or anything about any card game, 3 costs 1-1 one, one is just not good enough to, to attack. I mean, some people were, in the end, playing and attacking with it if they were lacking other resources, but that's, that's a whole different story. And, well, printing a unit that is there just to return and trade for some other cards, and that got me thinking, can we use Raska Rewarded? in that same fashion. Well, probably yes, because I made a video of it. So take a look at Raska, Dragon Nabob, in Throne. Okay, guys, so there you have it. Raska rewarded it. The two cost three, three cultist in the menace color, colors of Fire, Primal, and Shadow that says when you play a dragon that you haven't played this game, draw Raska from your void. I mean, a 2 cost 3 3 is a very good stat line with a 2 cost 2 3 being the base, like the Bold Adventure or the 3 2, the Zalta Paladin or Argentport Soldier before that. Uh, but is there a way to use this card as a unit that, let's say, is a 0 1 that has no stats whatsoever, that is like an Ephemeral Wisps, but that one that does not come back into play but comes back to your hand? each time you play a dragon. So I wanted to test this theory, and this is, well, uh, this uh, deck is more of a thought concept than a tier one deck for the throne format, for sure. I mean, I did win some games with it, and you're gonna see some games I played with it later in the video as well. Uh, but uh, let me walk you through this thought experiment. Okay, so uh, to make this into a whole experiment, I also made sure that in this deck, there is no way for you, no way whatsoever for you to play Raska Rewarded. So this card can only be used as a card that you get to discard for some for some benefits. And if you want to uh, take a look at the benefits uh, that come from discarding cards, uh, there are well maybe not this, maybe not these, but in uh, there was a cycle in all five colors uh, back in the day of back in the day of Fall of Argent Board that you could discard a card from your hand to create and draw a weak common spell. That's not the way to do it, in my opinion. But in Primal, there is a ton of ways uh, to uh, loot cards. Uh, that is also an old MTG term from uh, Merfolk Clutter back in Exodus that had the ability to tap into uh, draw a card and discard a card. Uh, and since then that effect has been called looting, at least to my knowledge. So here you have, for example, Gust Riders, draw two, discard two, Pitfall Tramp, draw one, discard one, Herald Song, the same, uh, Whispering Wind, discard a card to do something. Uh, later we have Honor of Claws, draw three, discard one, etc, etc. 
So I wanted to, to base my deck around that mechanic with Raska rewarded, but also remember the fact that fire as a color has, I believe, the highest number of dragons. I specifically stra stayed away from all shadows, uh, from all shadow cards, uh, stone scar cards, and felon cards. I mean, later I also made a deck that uses Raska in a similar fashion as this, but instead of drawing and discarding, it's just playing it and then replaying it when it dies. So there is a deck out there uh, that does uh, that does that thing as well. But this once again is a thought of experiment of. Can you make Raska into a card draw engine, just in a in a mid range dragon deck? And the answer is yeah, probably. Uh, I mean, if you go to the expedition tab, uh, all the cards that I have been using uh, to draw and to discard, i.e., Whispering Wind, Crunch the Hoarder, Pitfall Trap, Herald Song, and Honor of Claws, are not available in expedition. That is why this deck is in the throne format. Uh, but uh, let me get you through. Uh, through the specifics here. So Raska has a strange clause of when you play a dragon that you haven't played this game, which means you have to play differently named dragons. So I put in, as you can see, a lot of one-offs. These are just one-off dragons that you can play to grab Raska back from your void to your hand. And that is also why what makes Dragonforge that much better, because even if though you're running one-offs of each, you also have four tutors to grab one of those dragons if you need it at a specific point in time. For example, two Thunderstrike dragons, or a Molot and the Kova, or an Eclipse dragon, etc., etc. Uh, but for this deck to work, you first have to start discarding Raska. And for that, we have five sources, ones I've already told you about, and I'm going to go through those first. So you have your four copies of Whispering Wind, the two cost primal one to flyer that says when this attacks, you may discard a card from uh, discard a card from your hand to draw a higher cost card from your deck. Which means if you discard Raska, you're probably drawing a Crunch or a Dragon or a Dragon Forge to grab you a dragon or Honor of Claws that can draw you even further into drawing your dragons. Uh, so yeah, the only thing Whispering Wind does not do is get you out of uh, Power Screw uh, because, well, power cards cost uh, none. So if you discard a power card, you get any other any non-power card from your deck. Uh, but uh, if you have uh, if you have something expensive, well, then you're just getting something more expensive. So there is that. But then later you have uh, four copies of Crunch the Hoarder. I mean, this is not a Yeti deck, but it, this is a still this is still a three three for three uh, with Overwhelm that says Infiltrate, which means when this hits the enemy player, you get to draw two cards, then discard a card, and you're usually discarding Raska and then playing a Dragon to get that Raska back, so we can do other effects such as this one, etc., etc. Also, once uh, uh, here and there, this one can get Berserk. Uh, then you have Pitfall Trap, the one cost primal relic that says once per turn you may pay one to draw a card, then discard a card, but you can only use this if you have played a unit this turn. And if you have a Pitfall Trap in game, uh, that means that later in the game it usually is like, okay, so I draw a dragon, so I play the dragon, I, uh, I get Raska from my void or multiple Raskas from my void to my hand, I pay one, I draw another card and discard the Raska. And then later, when I draw another dragon, I play the dragon, I draw an additional card. So, in fact, if you have at least one Raska in your void and you have a Pitfall Trap in hand, that makes each one of your dragons cantrip, which means play a dragon, pay one more, draw an additional card. That's a good effect. Also, the summon deal one damage to an enemy comes into is very, very handy. And remember, this is any enemy. This can go to, towards the opponent's face, and it can, can also... Uh, ping some sites and well that comes in handy once in a while for example against uh, Thudrock's Masterwork I mean it just kills that site altogether now uh, next we have four copies of Herald Song the two cost primal echo spell which means if you draw this you draw another copy of it you get to draw a card then discard a card on its own you it is just a two cost draw card because you're discarding the other copy of Herald Song but if you get to discard a couple of Raskas with it and then later uh, get those Raskas back with dragons and then later discard those Raskas then this is just two cost draw card and two cost draw card plain and simple yes this is the card advantage deck also remember if uh, this deck is running the blazing salvo fast market spell 
that swaps a card from your hand with a two cost card in your market. So if you put a Herald Song back to your market with one Blazing Salvo and then use another Blazing Salvo to get a card back from your market and you get that Herald Song, you're getting two Herald Song back for the price of one card. Also a benefit. And last but not least, when it comes to drawing and discarding cards, we have four copies of Honor of Claws, the four cost uh, primal spell, slow spell still. Draw three cards, then discard Raska Rewarded uh, or any other card if you don't have any Raskas handy. And four copies of Raska herself, and that is the base of this deck. That and a ton of differently named dragons. And <laughs> if you're running a more budget version of the deck, and for example you don't have Mullet in the Kova, you can run any other dragon that I'm not running in this deck, because if you're in these two colors and you type in dragon, you have tons and tons of stuff. I mean, I'm running just one Teething Whelp. You can do, I don't know, even Burning Core Drake, even Crimson Fire Maw if you have that campaign. Uh, you can go for Pouncing Drake. You can go for Thunder of Wings even. I mean, whatever. You, uh, and you can see there are a lot of dragons that I'm actually not playing in this deck. Uh, even Brood of Aramod can find its place here. I mean, why not? Uh, so yes, this is uh, the... This is the most flexible deck uh, because of that. Oh no, I, I am running Crimson Firemon, never mind. Uh, so yeah, the base of this deck is 4 Raskas, uh, 20 ways of drawing and discarding cards, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 dragons. And that's about it. Also, the fact that you're running Dragon Forges. Uh, you get to draw a dragon or weapon of your choice from your deck and reduce its cost by one. And the fact that you can grab a weapon uh, made me put one relic weapon into the deck, Mage Breaker. And Mage Breaker is actually my favorite relic weapon target to get off of Dragon's Forge, because if you play Dragon's Forge on turn three, then on turn four you can play Mage Breaker for two, because it's cheaper, then you can Spellcraft for two more. And you're on turn four, so you should have four power. And you get to play unexpected results on an unexpecting enemy as well. Uh, finishing the deck off, we have four copies of Blazing Salvo, the uh, one cost fast spell, uh, the fire one that deals two damage to a unit and you may swap a card from your hand with a two cost card from your market. And I'm gonna get to the market in a moment. And four copies of Torch, well you should know Torch. If you have been playing Eternal card game for at least two days, you know what Torch is. Uh, as far as the power base is concerned, I went with only 25 power and no seek powers and none of that, because this deck in theory is running a ton of draw and the discard effects, like Herald Song, like Honor of Claws, like Crunch the Hoarder. Uh, so you want to be using those Raskas for your draw engine. Uh, and well, most of these dragons, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, so almost half of the dragons cost four anyway, uh, four or less if you count in Teething Whelp. Uh, so yeah, there is that. And later in the game, uh, if you if you draw a ton of cards and you get to that Mullet and the Kova or Kenna, to that 7 or 8 power, you, you just play those and you're happy with that. Uh, so only Crest, Seats, Banners and, uh, and 13 Sigils. This deck is not running Skycrag Insignias because you're running non-Skycrag cards in here, i.e. the Shadow in Raskar Rewarded. And you can see a shadowy shadow symbol here as well. Uh, as far as the market goes from Blazing Salvo, you have uh, an Ice Bolt to just uh, get rid of any unit for two. It is a fast primal spell that deals seven damage to a unit and its owner can play a sigil of their choice, well, has to play a sigil of their choice from their deck depleted. You have Royal Decree that transforms a non-power card in the enemy player's hand into a Seek Power. Uh, very good uh, against uh, even-handed golem decks, obviously. On Onslaught you get to transform each other copy in their hand and their deck. I mean an onslaught. It is good against the AG decks. You have your Seek Answers, which can grab you a power, that is a Skycrag uh, sky power, or a non-power from your deck. You have your Spellbound Vestige, uh, that is that is actually also in, in place of a power card. You have Spellbound Vestige here, uh, because it makes all your dragons cost one less, and your dragons are the top hand in your deck. Also, your spells deal plus one damage while you have a dragon. So that is a small upside to all those Blazing Salvos and Torches. Not to Pitfall Traps, though, and not to Opposing Firebombs. Just, just mentioning it here. 
the market is also running one copy of Draconic Ire, the bargain spell that when you hit the enemy player with a dragon, you can play this card directly from your market without the need to specifically draw it from your market. You get to kill an enemy attachment and deal damage equal to its cost to the enemy player. So, sure, there is that. Also, remember, hitting the enemy player means even effects such as Molot and Nakova deal 4 damage to each enemy, including the enemy player, unless they have an Aegis. Uh, so there is that. Well, and Raging Fire Maw. And Brutal Frostlord, if you pay 7, and then you pay 3. So there are those interactions here as well. I'm going to go through all the dragons here, but uh, as I said... Uh, uh, you can use any and all other dragons that you have in these two colors. Uh, so you have your basic teething well, the two cost uh, fire 2-2 two -two nightmare dragon that on mastery 2 gains flying and on mastery 6 get plus 3 plus 3 permanently. You have your Acidonis Untainted, the 4 cost Skycrag 3 4 flying dragon that on mastery 3 increases the damage of a spell in your hand by 3 and on mastery 12 creates and draws 3 copies of a spell in your hand. The other one doesn't have to be dealing damage, it can be Herald Song or Honor of Claws, etc. etc. Also, if you create and draw 3 copies of Herald Song, they create and draw 3 echo copies of Herald Song, so you're getting 6 cards into your hand. Now that's card advantage. Uh, Crimson Fire Maw, the 4 cost double fire 5 4 flying dragon that says when this hits the enemy player, reduce the cost of the top card of your deck by 4. If the top card of your deck costs 0 or, or doesn't cost anything because it's a power card, this effect goes onto, the, uh, onto another card. So if you reduce the cost of a Blazing Salvo, but you don't draw it because there's a power first, and then you use that again. Uh, the effect skips Blazing Salvo and goes to the next card that costs more than zero. That is a fun effect. Uh, sorry, that is an interesting effect that some people are not aware of. Poaching Drake is one of my favorite dragons in this deck list. This is the 4 cost double primal 4 3 flying dragon mage that on summon you get to. Uh, you get the option to transform an enemy unit with cost 3 or less into a 2 1 goat. And well, this can block a 2 1 goat easily. And transform effect means that uh, opponent can't later get uh, the great card they wanted back from their void, return it to, uh, to their hand, etc., etc. Raging Fire Maw is a four cost double fire two five flying wall of a dragon, uh, but also later in the game it has the option to pay six and twist, which means permanently give this unit plus one, negative one, uh, to deal its attack and damage to an enemy, could also be sight or the enemy player. So you twist and deal 3 damage to something, then 4, etc, etc. Uh, Tattoo Dragon, 4 cost, double fire, 4, 3, flyer. Nightmare Dragon with Pledge. When you draw your second card in a turn, you get to play a 2-2 two -two Oni Grunt. Fun fact, if you have Raska rewarded in your Void and you're playing Tattoo Dragon, you are drawing Raska from your Void which means you are drawing your second card in a turn while Tattoo Dragon is already in play and you get to create a 2-2 Oni Grunt. So if you manage to discard Raska before you play Tattoo Dragon, then you're just getting a free 2-2 Oni Grunt. Uh, Eclipse Dragon, very necessary in this deck list. Uh, 5 cost double fire, 4-4 four, four flying charge quick draw dragon. That gives you plus 3 power at the start of the enemy player's turn, which allows you to play uh, Dragon Forge or Blazing Salvo into Ice Bolt usually. Uh, next up we have uh, Soul, Soul Fire Drake, the 6 cost triple fire 5-2 flying charge dragon that on Entombed uh, gives each unit in your deck randomly flying or charge. Spitflame Draconis, 6 cost, uh, double fire, double primal, 6-7 flying dragon. You can pay 4 to deal 1 damage to an enemy unit. If it has endurance you get to kill it straight out. Also on summon you get to stun an enemy unit and it stays stunned while you have this dragon in play. Uh, one or rather two copies of Thunder Strike Dragon because it has echo. It is also flying and it is also a six cost triple primal 5-6 flying dragon. Kenna, Shaman of the Scale, seven cost, triple primal 5-6 killer, later gets uh, flying. When you play a spell, Kenna gets plus two, plus two and flying this turn. Tribute, which means if a, if a unit went into your void this turn before you played Kenna, Shaman of the Scale, you get the additional effect to, of drawing a spell from your void. Remember, once again, if it's uh, Herald Song, you get, to, you get two copies of Herald Song back into your hand. And, uh, well, yeah, 
uh, as far as tribute goes and the uh, card going into your void, if you use an effect such as draw and discard and you get to discard a unit, for example, Rask Rewarded, and then you get to play Kenna, well, that counts as tribute. And last but certainly not least, and this is also a dragon I would advise you to craft if you wanted to be playing this deck, uh, Molotin Nakova, 8 cost, triple fire, triple primal, 8-8 eight, eight flying Aegis Dragon with Spark, deal 4 damage to each enemy, and Spark is if the enemy player has taken damage this turn. So if you attack, for example, with a Whispering Wind or with, uh, or you played Pitfall Trap and dealt 1 damage straight to the opponent or torch the opponent's face and then played Molotin Nakova. Okay, that's a lot of text and a lot of dragons. And now I'm just going to show you three games with this thought experiment of Raska Dragon Nabob and show you if, uh, if just using a card without being able to play it just for the draw and the discard effect and redrawing it to be able to discard it once again, uh, like a coin on a string or a banknote on a string, then, well, sure, just... Stay a while and watch. Yes, let's nuke them all. One power, some dragons and two Raskas, but this is a redraw. Fun fact, in the redraw step, Brutal Frostlord says the opponent has zero cards in their hand. One pump. Okay, we have two ways of discarding Raska. And we have Raska, so this is a go. Starting with Banner into Seed of Fury and Whispering Wind, then into Crunch the Hoarder. Okay. All right, Seed of Fury now. And play Whispering Wind and hope the opponent doesn't have an Annihilate or a Seer. They don't. Time Sigil. Shrine to carve it. Well. We probably all know what this is going to be. So let's discard Raska. Let's grab a dragon or Honor of Claws. I mean, for all we know. Uh, let's play another power and play Crunchy the Hoarder. Now remember that Shrine to Carve it is a card that we can get rid of with... Uh, Uh, that we can get rid of with Draconic Ire. But unfortunately, opponent plays Madness on our Crunch and uses that ability, and hopefully they don't have Combust, but they do. So, yeah, we are not getting rewarded at all. Uh, Herald Song, but we have Honor of Claws, which is slightly better. It draws three and discards one of those Herald Songs, for example, or another Raska if we draw it. Nope. And with so much power, I, th uh, I think we can just get rid of one of the banners and use... Uh, Herald Song later in the game. Fortunately, opponent is low on units. They have zero in play right now. Uh, but let's see what they want to do. Destruction Chant with Decimate and Invoke. That's good. I think. Well, Invoke is so swingy that it de actually depends on what they get. Okay. Nothing here. Uh, so we can just draw... Ooh, Crimson Fire Maw is a good card. And we do have a ton of power. And I'm not uh, playing uh, Herald Song right now. I just want to go for Crimson Fire Maw, get Raska back, play a power, play Herald Song, draw a card, discard that Raska. Sure. Fortunately, opponent is not putting too much pressure on us. Steward of Prophecy. Oh no! Canna? Yep, Canna. Canna got hit. Two more copies of Herald Song, but we are playing. And you can see all the, uh, the dragon is lit with the option to get Raska out of here. So we're drawing a card. We're getting Raska to the Void. And next turn we can play Tattoo Dragon, get Raska back, play Herald Song. Uh, get the Oni, obviously. Here, I don't think uh, I want to block, uh, but I'm still thinking about it. I mean, mm, I would like to get the opponent down some unit, but we do have a torch to get rid of that, so in the end, I opted not to block. Uh, yes, our hater, this is the we can't play Raska, but we can draw a Raska deck. And Combust to get rid of our dragon. 
And I guess the opponent should be playing that before the attack. So they attack for two more. And also... Uh, and also stole some life. So you can see here, drawing Graska from the Void, playing the Oni Grunt. Playing Herald Song, discarding Graska once again, and probably even torching their unit. Sure, they can devour it or do stuff like that. Don't care. We just need to get rid of Shrine to carve it. Unless they went for an Induce Madness. As their market spell of choice. This is probably Aramos Machinations. This is their usual first card that they're grabbing. Okay. They can attack with Kato, but are they going to attack with Kato? Well, yes, they are. Or are they? I mean, Oni Gruntalicious is a good blocker here, I would be guessing. Yes. They're not even using the second carver. So yeah, let's attack. We can play Draconic Ire on the Shrine to Carve It. We can play Pitfall Trap, kill one of the uh, Kindlers. We can torch the other one. First, I wanted to do Herald Song, don't know why. Maybe to get rid of Kenna. And this was draw and discard. Oh, probably that. That's why. And we have Dragon Forge, which can grab us Eclipse Dragon or something like that, that we can play next turn. Yeah, Aramont's Machinations, bringing that back Kindler, Kato, and <laughs> the Crunch they stole. <laughs> Captain Crunch that they stole. Sure. Okay, so we can get rid of a couple of cards from their hand, that's for sure. Uh, Royal Decree, now Sea Cancers. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I, th I was thinking and I went for Blazing Salvo to get Vestige, probably. Or a royal decree or an ice bolt. All are options or all are valid options. Yeah, I went for royal decree just to see what the opponent had in their hand. Probably nothing, but still. Oh, madness. Okay, that was a good one. And yeah, we can draw this card because we can draw uh, <laughs> we can draw Raska, but it was Dragon Forge. And right now, I think I know a very good target for Dragonforge. This is a double block on Crunch, so the opponent cannot draw two cards. They still have their 3-2 in play. Yes, and they have a Seek Power in play as, in hand as well. But I'm gonna go for Dragonforge here, get Molot and Nakova. That goes seven, we have seven power. That's Echo on Herald Song, which already allows us to, to play to get the Oni. We're also playing Molot, decimating the opponent's board and redrawing Raska back to our hand. And then later we can Herald Song Raska back to our Void, etc, etc. Also, we have a lot of damage in the air. Sure, so the opponent gets a Giant. And a Wisp. And a carver. And it's probably going to be the end of it. Oh, strange burglar. Okay. They're trying to draw into something. But in the end, they will succumb to the dragon army. Okay, on to game number two.
Once again, a one power hand that needs to be redrawn. This is more like it because we have Raska once again. Dragon Nabob. What is it going to be, opponent? What is it going to be? Alright. Crest of Fury for another Blazing Salvo. No, we don't need that one. An Echo, or a Fate, or whatever. Fire seek power, so right now I'm thinking as usual. Uh, this is uh, this is Joe. Yep, that's Joe, all right. Another Raska. We still can't play anything in this thought experiment, but this is not a fast deck. This is a grindy card advantage deck for sure. Red Canyon Smuggler. Okay, there's a pitfall trap of with the smuggler's name on it. Oh, and a dragon forge, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Also, opponent probably if they're playing Winch's Control, usually the first card they're going for is Regent's Tomb. And top decking Dragon Forge is amazing because uh, we can Dragon Forge into Eclipse Dragon. On the other hand, we could have played Blazing Salvo, get, got our uh, Royal Decree, uh, I mean, if we didn't have Dragon Forge, and gotten uh, Regent's Tomb out from their hand. But we are getting Eclipse Dragon. Yes, we are losing a Blazing Salvo, but do we care? Probably not. So play a Power, play Eclipse Dragon. We can use Pitfall Trap to draw a card and discard one of the Raskas. We can attack the site, and we still have three power during the opponent's turn. Which is not a huge deal because we don't have any fast spells, but still, well, we do, we do have that. Question is, opponent, what are you going to play here? Annihilate, sure. You can try and kill all you want, but we are playing Crunch, we're drawing a card, we're discarding Raska number two, and we're getting Kenna. Shaman of the scale. Yep, that one is getting torched. Power is being sought. Just as sigils are being played. Um, I thought about going for Whispering Wind, but I can go for Kenna first, draw those Raskas, and then if Kenna gets killed, and she probably will, uh, I can play Whispering Wind, draw a card, discard Raska, get the draw engine going yet again. Sure. I also want to discard the other Raska. Now whether to play the seat or not, I was debating on it for a moment, but in the end I thought, well, if they kill my unit, I can at least go Herald Song draw card, discard that uh, discard that seat. I know I do have Molot and Nakova here somewhere, but still. I can also just discard the seed to attacking with uh, uh, with the herald. It's getting torched, but you can see the opponent is down to two cards. I mean, they are playing a card for card for card, but still, uh, we are ahead on the card advantage deal. So this is going to be herald song, you know, the copy. Uh, discarding that, playing a power, playing Soul Flame Drake, Soul Fire Drake, getting those two Raskas back yet again and attacking the opponent. Honor of Claws can get one of those Raskas back to the void. We can attack here. Play Crunch, draw, discard Raska, play a power. We are so deep in this deck now. It's amazing. Sure. 
Crunch gets suffocated, but the 5 2 is still alive. Dragon Forge. <laughs> sure. Now that's a good one. But uh, I would like to attack the opponent first. If this connects, we can Dragon Forge, have 7 power up, which means Molot and Nakova cost 7. So we can play our power, play Molot and Nakova, get the opponent down to 6. We have two torches in hand. We also have an 8-8 flying dragon with Aegis. We also got two Raskas back. So, yeah. Game set and match. Probably. Yes. Okay. Now let's, on, let's get on to game number three. This is going to be the third, the last, and the longest game here. And, well, yeah, no Raskas, no card draw. I wanted to change that. This is and is not more like it at the same time. I believe at this point, this version was running uh, three Teething Whelps instead of one Soul Flame Drake and one uh, uh, Mage Breaker. But it was 78 out of 80, the same deck list. So it should be playing the same, right? Right. Okay, seek power into treasure trove. In the meantime, we are going for Seed of Fury. Because, uh, well, we can Whispering Wind then play better uh, non-depleted. Not that it changes a lot, but it gives us a Blazing Salvo up. The opponent is an Ixen, so I'm guessing it's either unitless, like fully unitless, uh, or... Uh, or it's the Ikaria Smuggler version. Don't know which one yet. But given Blazing Salvo, it's probably uh, it's probably the unitless one. Okay, I was thinking I can I can Dragon Forge this turn, get something cheap, uh, or I can play Pitfall Trap, target the opponent. Next turn I can go Teething Whelp. Uh, draw a card, discard Raska, but I went for Dragon Forge instead because if I draw an undepleted power source or a banner, uh, I can go Whelp, Trap, or rather Trap, Whelp, Power, uh, Draw, Discard. Opponent's going for Honor of Claws, sure. Let them draw as much as they have to and they need to. We're gonna draw more in this game. So, Dragon Forge. No, it's not time for Emolot and Nakova, not yet. Yeah, Brutal Frostlord is it. Could have also been a Tattoo Dragon. And in the end, I went for my 2 4 flyer. Could have also gone the. Uh, slower route of just playing Pitiful Trap once again. Garden of Omens. Well, if the opponent plays Ice Bolt on our Dragon, we're very happy, so thank you, opponent. Very happy because it ramped us up. Herald Song is nice. So let's draw and discard Raska. And I would like to once again draw and discard Raska because we're going for the full card advantage. And against the control deck, we want to get on par with the power being played. Pitfall Trap number two, I thought against it, but if we can have two of them, then we're just, uh, uh, after for each dragon that we're playing, we're drawing two cards, discarding two Raskas. Huh? Huh? All right. Also, two pitfall traps means we can kill the enemy side. Just with those pings before they can melt it down. I mean, they already played, uh, or rather non-played a meltdown, not the resurface, which is kind of strange, if I have to be honest. Okay, so... I was thinking about Eclipse Dragon, but the pings on the site are probably better. So, Teething Whelp, get those Raskas back. Play Pitfall Trap, one to the site.
pay one to draw one, discard Raska, hopefully non depleted power is the card we're drawing. But even if not, it's still okay, right? Oh, it's Herald Song, it's fine still. And second Pitfall Trap to get rid of that side finally. I don't know how a whole huge garden of omens can fall not into one but into two pitfall traps. I mean, after the first one, after sorry, after the first one, I thought they would know better, but seems no. It seems that no. Now the opponent is thinking on their strategy. Okay, Crimson Fire Maw can allow us to... Well, yes, I'm going for the singular advantages now because I'm low on power, so I'm drawing one Raska. Sure. It's still a cantrip on the dragon. Because this dragon can trip. Wait, what? <laughs> this is the fourth Blazing Salvo now, isn't it? Yes. Do they have a fifth one? No. So they just got a spell. Sorry, a card. It doesn't, doesn't have to be a spell. Edic Edict of Linrai, sure. So our unit is unimpressive. Could go for Crunch, then draw and discard Raska. But in the end, I went for Eclipse Dragon and attacked the opponent. Don't know why. Seriously, don't know why. Just to get some damage in. Just to get the second Raska so we can play Crunch and try and discard two Raskas. Probably. <laughs> Or maybe, just maybe, I want to go for Royal Decree. <laughs> okay, Onslaught triggered. We get to play Royal Decree. Savage Incursion, Royal Decree of their own, Harsh Rule, Age Worn Vestige. Okay, I think I want to get rid of Savage Incursion because this is what the opponent can do to get back in the game. Royal Decree on Raskas, well, doesn't change a lot. And I have to get rid of at least one Raska now <laughs> and drawing another one, sure. Because if they go Vestige, just attack the dragon just for the sake of uh, getting Onslaught, they can get rid of Raskas, but not all Raskas. And even if we just have one Raska in the Void and we can return it, then it's still okay. Or even okay plus. And they are playing Harsh Rule here. I don't have a Negate in the market. That's what I was looking for. And in the end, Caleb's Choice might find its way there. I was also thinking of going Blazing Salvo, getting Raska back to the market. One of the Raskas for, I don't know, Herald Song, because it's two cards for the price of one. They're gonna go uh, full on Royal Decree here. Fun fact, just one Poaching Drake, just one Spitflame Draconis in the, the whole deck. No, no backlash market, no negates market whatsoever. And the opponent is thinking, is thinking. I mean, Raskas. One hand, one deck, one void, one market. In the end, it was for the biggest dragon, obviously. So here we can uh, Herald Song, discard Raska, play Poaching Drake. First, obviously, we can seek power. But uh, 
I opted against that because if we discard Raska, yeah, Teething Whelp, we've already played a Teething Whelp. So we're going Poaching Drake and once again drawing Discarding. The goal here is to draw more cards than the opponent. Yeah, sure. Okay, Honor of Claws is nice. Thing, yeah, I thought I could seek power here as well. So let's do Honor of Claws, discard the Raska. Play Crunch because we can. Thornberry Crunch. Okay. Well, we are running lower on time and on dragons. Whispering Wind to draw and discard twice. Don't need another Teething Well because we've already played one. Don't think I need another crunch. <clears throat> Let's play this. Kenna is a very good card here. And I went for crunch as well, so the opponent has two targets, so they need a harsh roll or an end of the line, yep. To use that to keep hitting us in the face with age with age worn vestige. Uh yes, Kenna getting those two Raskas back. Drawing discarding Raska, drawing discarding Raska. You can see where this one goes into card advantage territory. Yeah, just running 25 power in the deck, but still 10 plus two power here. Garn of Omens, sure. Aryan gets killed. Oh, oh no. <clears throat> what is it then, end of the line? Sorry, end of the story. Have they already played that one? No, just a harsh roll from hand. Attacking us with a vestige down to 13. Yeah, that's a long-term plan for from the opponent, but it seems to be working. I should have gone just for Molot and Nakova then. Uh, but opted not to. Power is what we're discarding, then playing Honor of Claws. Oh no. So in the end I did go for this one. Okay. So I gave the opponent a target. A huge one at that. And we are getting an additional power. <laughs> Channel the Tempest, face, for four. <laughs> Another harsh rule. And they are attacking us for three more. Oh my goodness. This is quite deadly. Dragon forges. Okay. What can we forge? Thunderstrike. There's not a lot of dragons left. Thunderstrike is one of them, or rather two of them. So let's go for that. Let's get those Raskas back. Let's play a power. Let's draw a card. Let's discard one of those Raskas. And hopefully by now the opponent is out of harsh rules. Meltdown is hitting one of our pitfall traps. Fortunately, we have two. Hailstorm, sure. And a torch. Oh my goodness, and we're getting down to three. Hope the opponent doesn't draw a torch here. Okay, tattoo dragon means uh, we're getting Raska back to our hand. Oh my goodness, this is this is very difficult. I mean, we're dying to a single torch now.
Getting Raska, get, uh, yeah, get that one. Draw a card, discard Raska. One of three. <laughs> we can go Honor of Claws, discard Raska, and then play Thunder Strike Dragon. Yeah, that's a lot of cards. I mean, I'm even overdrawing, so I have to discard them back. <laughs> and at this point, I believe I was down to like 20 cards in deck, something like this. Okay, we're still alive. Hmm. Blazing Salvo. Get Vestige for those torches, I'm guessing. Play torch here. Attack with both and attack face. Yeah, I was down to 20 cards at this point. <laughs> Acidonis, sure. So let's grab something other than Acidonis, like this Raging Fire Maw. Probably kill the opponent next turn. Let's just hope they don't have another Age Worn Vestige. They don't. Okay. So we can attack with both of these. And play Raging Fire Maw and start twisting. Oh, sure. We're getting those Raskas back. And we are down to 15 cards while the opponent has 38 cards in their deck still. So even against the card advantage unitless deck, I was able to draw 23 more cards than the opponent. Now, if that's not card advantage, I don't know what is. Anyway, this is going to be it for the video. So let's head on back to the studio. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I believe the Thor experiment worked, at least in those three games. I mean, I believe I had a rather at least positive win ratio with this deck when I was playing it like wait let me recount one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six yeah uh, when I was playing this uh, this deck I won eight games I lost six so it was slightly above the 50% I'm aiming for with meme decks I mean if I get can get more than 50% on a thought experiment meme deck I'm really really fine with that anyway Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video presentation and this thought experiment. As I already said, if you want a more bu budget version of this deck, there are several cards that are necessary. I mean, Raska is necessary because, well, that's the namesake of the deck. From the dragon, uh, from the dragon part itself, I think Poaching Drake, uh, Eclipse Dragon, and Molot and Nakova are the most important ones. Uh, but because Teething Whelp, I, I, I think everyone has a Teething Whelp in their collection, or should have at least. Uh, that is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you enjoyed yourselves here, just click on subscribe to show your support to this channel. Thank you. Have a great week. Stay safe. Kalebovich out. See you next week.